Hello, happy Thursday. Welcome to our first lecture in module 153. It is a 30-day module. Um, the first few couple of few chapters are going to be mostly information. I want you guys to get through that with me. Now that you've gotten these chapters where you're doing mostly coding, you get spoiled to it, right? You don't want to go through and read all the information and all of this. But um, I want to say this. One of the things I'm going to be paying special attention to as we go through these uh, chapters is to show you where it is in the CPT manual. So many of the things, for example, if on NCCT, if it asks you what a sign or a symbol means and you can't remember, well, you learned it in class, but maybe you can't remember it then, it's actually in your book, in your, in your manual that you have access to. So I want to teach you where to go to find those things so that you're not constantly going, oh my goodness, who maintains this manual? What, what was the year that it's all there? It's all in the manuals. We just have to know where to go to find it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to get this. I call it getting it over with because, you know, how fun is lectures compared to when we sit and code together? They're not as fun, right? But they're still important. So it's not going to take long. So here we go. So chapter eight, module 153, introduction to the CPT. So any of you, do you know what your CPT looks like? I probably yes, should have waited. The yellow book? Yes, this is what your CPT looks like. And you can see I've already gone in and put my little labels in that come with the book. And then I have extra ones because you guys know I'm the label queen. I love labels, stickers and labels. <laughs> pins. I just ordered more uh, more pins. Don't need them. I have a, a ton of them. But anyway, so I am the label queen because I love I think it's just a great tool. Okay, by the time we finish talking about this portion of the chapter, you're gonna know you're gonna be able to identify the uses of the CPT manual, name the developers of the CPT manual, identify the placement of CPT codes on the CMS 1500 paper insurance form. Do you guys remember when we went over the uh, the 1500 form before? Yes. So this is gonna be a little portion of that again. Know the importance of using the current year CPT manual, recognize the symbols used in the CPT manual, identify the content of the CPT appendices, and list the major sections found in the CPT manual. Sounds like a whole lot of stuff, right? It's really not all that much. I wanna start with number four and I wanna ask you a question. Why would it be important to use the current year of any of our manuals? Why is it important? Because they update it every year. Right, there's mm -hmm. changes every single year. So that wasn't complicated to, to figure out, right? <clears throat> so that's not gonna actually be in the slides because we know that. So we're going to start out by answering the question, what is medical coding? Medical coding is a little bit like translation. Coders take medical reports from the doctors, which may include a patient's condition, the doctor's diagnosis, a prescription, and whatever procedures the doctor or healthcare provider performed on the patient and turn that into a set of codes, which make up a crucial part of the medical claim. So you guys really kind of know that because we just did diagnosis coding, right? So diagnosis coding is what the patient is ill with. CPT coding is what we did to help that illness. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. So yeah. the CPT is what we did and the ICD-10 is why we did it. Okay. Why do we use codes? Because computers understand codes. Um, why are alphanumeric codes used instead of verbal descriptions of disorders or procedures? Well, here's why. Coding allows for a greater standardization and simplification of the process of interpreting medical diagnostic and treatment information. That just says a computer can't read all those words, right? Correct but it can read a letter and some numbers. 
And so attached to those letters and numbers is a description. You guys already know this because we've been through ICD-10 coding. And remember, we had to pay very close attention to what the description was for each code. Coding makes processing more efficient. Coding permits comp compilation of statistics. Okay, so we just came through COVID. Still dealing with a little bit of COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Remember when we were dead in the middle of COVID and they would come on and say, Louisiana has a blank percentage of COVID. Did you ever think how they have that? How they know that? I wonder every time I hear it. They have it because of coders. Because every time COVID gets entered into an electronic claim, and goes to the insurance company, the third-party payer, they're entered into this big cloud of patient who has this. When you hear the percentages of, of, of the community or, the, or of society that has HIV, where do they get that? They get it from the coders and the billers. They get it from us. That's how important your job is. Is everything that you code, is it going to be on a level that's that's high? No, it's not. But sometimes it will be. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, coding helps for no information getting lost. All right. So current procedural terminology. C-P-T. Know it. Learn it. Breathe it. It needs to be in your memory. ICD-10, International Classification of Diseases, ICD. What is the purpose of assigning a code to a procedure or service? But do you guys get that we really need to know why we're coding? <laughs> well, this is only my third or fourth slide. It allows healthcare providers to communicate a efficiently and effectively with the third party payer, which is our insurance, about the services and procedures provided to their patient. Now we're gonna be talking a little bit about that little thin purple manual, the HixPix manual. The CPT HixPix codes are used to identify procedures, services, supplies, drugs delivered as a patient of care, uh, as part of a patient care. Uh, diagnosis codes provide the diagnostic justification for the delivery of these services. Okay, now I read all of that information. Now I'm just going to again put it in my own words. Okay, so say that I'm going to the cardiologist and I'm going to have a, a EKG done. So I'm doing that. Would the diagnosis that's being coded be important to that procedure? It would, because it's one, it's a word, it's two words, medical necessity. So getting that EKG means that I have to have some sort of a diagnosis that matches with that, that EKG. I couldn't go in and um, have an EKG done and they say, oh, she's got um, bronchitis. Now, pneumonia could be okay, but I'm trying to think of something, an infected toe, a broken knee, does not match with that EKG, right? So anything that you do, general practitioners um, are a little bit easier because they do a lot of different things, right? But when you're in a specialty like cardiology, you, you, it has to be uh, very, very certain that it's to do with the heart. Now, diabetes sometimes affects the heart. So there are some exceptions. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. So these are some important things to know. The coding, the CPT coding system was first developed and published by the AMA in 1966 as a method of reporting medical and surgical procedures and services using standard terminology. Because the practice of medicine is ever-changing, the CPT manual is ever-changing. It is updated annually. It is updated annually. 
y'all get that that's important, right? <laughs> to, reflect, to reflect technological advances and editorial revisions, the AMA is meeting the requirement by continuing to make the code definitions more precise. So it is published and maintained by the AMA. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is Hicks Picks. Healthcare Common Procedure Coding System. Do I ever remember what that stands for until I hit this chapter? We always call it the Hicks Picks, right? <laughs> Level two national codes, Hicks Picks, are alphanumeric codes that are used to provide for providers to report services, supplies, and equipment to Medicare and Medicaid, patient patients for which no CPT code exists. So when we're looking in our Hicks picks and we start doing our Hicks picks, it's mostly going to be drugs, IVs, wheelchairs, walkers, um, special nutrition, and dental. <laughs> it has all the dental codes in there. So that's pretty, pretty cool. All right. The next thing that we're going to talk about is our 1500 form. Where do the CPT go? The CPT codes go. You see my arrow right here? 24D is where your CPT or your Hicks picks goes. Now I'm gonna tell you, I only had to fill out a paper form a few times when I was a coder, but it's important to know where these things go. If you look at 21, this is where your diagnoses go. You would have to write it in there. Your date of service, we're going to get to place a service that that's going to be important. Usually that is when you're doing electronic filing, the place of service is already programmed in there. But we're going to talk about where to find that in the CPT later on. But our CPT goes codes go on 24D. Now, the CPT book is very big, but it's only made up of six session, sections. Evaluation and management, which is what? My favorite. Mm. Anesthesiology, which is amazing. Anesthesiology is fun too. Surgery, there's some sections that I like better in surgery than others. Digestive system is one of them. Integumentary system rocks. Um, believe it or not, cardiology is not my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, then there's radiology, which I am eh, a kind of on pathology and laboratory. You'll see when you get there <laughs> and medicine. So, um, but the only section that we're covering in this module, in this 30 day module is going to be evaluation and management. Module 154 is a 40 day module and we'll cover um, anesthesia, surgery, and radi no, anesthesia and surgery, just those two. And then the next module. So you see how long we spend in our CPT? We spend a long time in our CPT. Now we're gonna talk about those signs and symptoms, sim signs, signs and symbols, not symptoms, symbols of the CPT. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the bullet point. Kind of looks like our stop sign, right? Except <laughs> this is black. It means new code for service procedure symbol. It means that this is a code for a new service. The pound symbol is a resequenced code. We'll talk about it when we get there. Resequenced is exactly what it sounds like. It's a code that is out of order. Those are fun, but everything can't be easy, right? Correct. Triangle is a revised code. This little symbol here, right and left triangles, is the beginning and ending of a text change. The plus sign is an add-on code. So anytime that you see this plus on a code, you cannot use it as a primary code. It's a code that can be added on to a primary code. Hence, 
add-on code. <laughs> can only be added to something. So add-on codes can only be used with another specific code. It's never used alone. No reduction for multiple services and full list in the Appendix D of the CPT. Okay, so do y'all notice that this is a picture of a slide? Because it would not let me copy and paste this slide. So I said, fine, I'll go around you. And I did that. Circle with the line in it means modifier 51 cannot be used with these codes. Yes, we're going to be learning about modifiers. Modifiers gives greater explanation to the third party payer. It's going to be all right. Don't freak out about them. We're going to get them. Circle means a recycled or reinstated code. <clears throat> Circle symbol identifies codes previously published in the CPT. So the first time it was used, it could have said something different. But this time it's been recycled to be chiropractic preservative, a reproductive test tish, uh, tissue ovarian. Yeah. Okay. So next thing that we're going to talk about is the appendices. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these. I'm not re reading all of these, but I am going to encourage you to go to the back of your book and look at your appendices. There's A through O. That's the first little bit. Not hard at all, right? I want to tell you a little bit or talk to you a little bit about modifiers. On the back, co on the back cover of your CPT, you can't see this. It just looks like a white sheet of paper, right? Let me, no, I'm not gonna do that. But this is a list of modifiers, okay? Also, I believe it's appendices A. Let me double check. Yeah, appendices A is another place where you can find modifiers. In the appendices, it gives a lot of detail about the modifiers, okay? On the back cover, this is where you're going to use modifiers the most. If you need a quick reference for modifiers, you're going to get it on the back cover. Ms. Marshall, we it on the back cover. Do you have um do you have your CPT manual? Yes, ma'am. Okay, open up your cut open up open it up to the on the back of your first page, the cardboard part. It says the time and abbreviations. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing too. All I'm seeing is abbreviations. <laughs> now so just want to hold yours up and let me see what it it says on the back okay go to the front cover is that the it's on the back of the front cover oh okay okay yeah it says symbols modifiers <laughs> Anesthesia, physical I status. See it now, yeah, I see it now. It's yeah. on the front cover. It's on the yeah. back of the front cover. I wasn't yeah. very clear. Sorry about that. But it also gives you the symbols. So if you have a quiz and you need to know what a symbol means, you can go to the back cover of this. It's right there. But yeah, that is the beginning. You guys need to go ahead. There is, there are already stickers here for you. Start doing this. your um. Start doing your um your sections, like for example, the, the label C-A-R-D stands for cardio and you're gonna put it in your cardio section, which starts on page 247. Just kind of go through and put up the, the M-U-S, I think it's M-U-S-C, musculoskeletal, you put that in the musculoskeletal. So you're labeling all of your systems is what it is. And that's why, um, the CPT takes us longer to go through because we're going to go through every single body system. We will be doing some anatomy. Use with this to curl the cords. 
So do we have any questions? No, I think I'm good. No, ma'am. That was the only question I had is where am I finding this? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the back of the front cover. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me um, for this little Zoom. I, like I told you, I wasn't going to take much of your time. And it is a lecture, but it wasn't very long, right? No. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I try not to do long ones. So, um, all right. Well, you guys have a great rest of the day. And um, let me know if you need anything. I want to remind you on Monday at four, we're going to have an open session. And you can come on and ask any questions or come on and say hi. Um, it is a... Uh, you can come in and ask questions and then leave, or you can stick around. I do not uh, record these because I may spend 10 minutes with nobody in. It's a come in, drop in, ask your questions, and then a lot of students do that and then leave. So um, it's actually one of my favorite times because <laughs> there's questions and we get to get in and look at stuff together. So um, a little in-depth. Yeah. Also, <laughs> starting next week, um, in this module, we're going to be starting CPT NCCT review, um, and it will be hosted by Miss Danielle Washington. The link is in your Genza bar in the little gray area under uh, NCCT prep class. If you click on that, the link's there and the packet's there. Um, it is of great importance that you begin to review because the uh, policy has changed now the NCCT is a requirement. You have to take it. So let's get a jump start on it and start studying now. All right. Okay. All right. Everybody have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.